Hey guys, I'm going to be going over a quick walkthrough, or a simple walkthrough, of how to get OpenBSD32 uh, installed and well working, basically. Uh, so we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a basic install, and we're also gonna, uh, we're gonna also download and run a web browser, um, because uh, I actually had a, had some trouble finding a web browser for uh, the 32-bit the version. Uh, on 64-bit, there's Firefox, but um, unfortunately, it's not. Uh, Firefox is not supported on a 32-bit. So anyway. What we gotta do is we gotta get the floppy or the not the floppy. We gotta get the uh, the the installation image. So, um, just so you know, um, you can get a 64-bit version of um, OpenBSD, but there are problems with it. Um, there are security issues, uh, uh, mainly being that OpenBSD is not entirely supported on a 64-bit yet. It's not finished, so there are like buffer overflows that that people can. Uh, that people can attack you with whenever you're on 64-bit. So, it's recommended that you use the 32-bit the version, and it, it was it was ma it was made for 32-bit anyway. But anyway, so now we're gonna go here. We're gonna install, or we're we're gonna pick the uh, install dot image. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do the install dot ISO since it's easier to use with with a the uh, virtual machine. I'll I'll just move on to actually making the virtual machine. Okay, so here we got our, uh, we have our window, um, and we are booting into it, so, well, we're boot booting into the installer, so, whenever we're, when, it, it's actually pretty simple to install this, but, um, for the beginner, it might be kind of confusing a little bit, but for, like, once you've installed it once, you'll probably never have an issue installing it again, but anyway... So as we can see now, it has it has uh, four options: install, upgrade, auto install, or shell. We're going to uh, do ins we're going to do install. <coughs> but um, oh yeah, also keep in mind uh, that uh, whenever you're burning it to a USB, if you're going to burn it to a USB, then you're going to want to use this p command specifically because you're going to need this this BS equals one megabyte. Um, so I don't know why specifically why that why this needs to be the, w the way you do it, but it's important that you do it, or else it like it, it, sometimes it won't find the it won't be able to find the uh, the the sets correctly. It won't be able to ins correctly ins install the sets off off the uh, the USB for some reason. But anyway, we're gonna do install, and we're just gonna hit enter, and okay. It's, Welcome to the install. Um, so let me actually, before I stu I actually get jump into this, let me try and make the the uh, the window. Let me try and make this bigger for you guys so that you can see it better. I probably should have done this before I started the vi the video, but anyway, we're gonna okay. I'll put this here, and now I'm gonna minimize this out. So now. We're gonna choose the keyboard layout. For now, we're just gonna do default. I, we don't have to ch um, mess around with that. Um, and then system host name. We're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna do like PC or something. And then it already has the uh, the it, the network interfaces. Whenever if you were to do this on a laptop, that would be it would be a more complicated complicated process. But I could do another vid uh, video about that if you guys need, want. Um, Basically, you, you have to like get you have to download the firmware for your Wi-Fi adapter, <coughs> and which is pretty annoying because you have to scour the internet for it since they're not allowed to distribute it since it's proprietary. But anyway, uh, network interface to configure. We're just gonna choose the default one, IP IP4, and we're gonna do auto configure. And then it's gonna ask for IP version six um, if we want that and. Let's just, for let's let's do auto configure. Why why not? Let's have IP version six. Um, available network interfaces. Done. All right. Done. Password for root account. So we're gonna you gotta make sure that this is a long and uh 
I'll make this sure that this is a really good password. Okay. Uh, there we go. And we're gonna do yes. Do you expect to run the X window system? Yes. You're gonna want to do yes here, but after this, um, whenever it says, do you want the X window uh, system to be started? Uh, do no, because it's a lot more. Um, <coughs> it's a lot more. Uh, well, how do you say? It's a lot more uh, customizable if you just um, don't. If you don't have it automatically boot into something or in, like boot directly into a window manager, you would want you you would most likely want to try out your like your own window managers and stuff. But it but if you're only planning to use one window manager, then you can just put this as yes. Um, but we're just gonna have no. Um, we're gonna do a lo a user. Just do you then, and. Just put your full name or whatever you want to put there. It doesn't really matter. And then we're going to put the password. Password again. Let's just ignore this. I mean, do you, if you really wanted some ec really extra security, you could mess around with this. But we're just going to do no for now. <coughs> There's our time zone. Here's our disk. Uh, this, if you want, you can... Uh, you can encrypt your entire disk with a with with a passphrase. It'll encrypt all the files and stuff. And this is good for like if you're really paranoid that like the fucking that the cops are gonna seize your devices or something. Um, but for the average user, you don't really need this as long as you have a your own computer and a in a place that nobody else is gonna mess with it. You you don't need this. But anyway, um, we're gonna do whole disk and auto layout. And now it's going to do all this stuff. And then we're going to, after this, we're going to install the sets. So, um, yeah, we're just going to choose the default. Uh, on laptop or, or, or a, a PC, it, it might actually, like, if you don't already have, like, a, a, an Ethernet cable, it will probably choose something else. But um, f luckily we have, um, we, we're, we're doing this in a virtual machine, so it's a lot simpler. Um, and I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure on PCs it would be just as simple. It's it's really the laptops that are the most complicated ones. But anyway, path name to sets. We're just gonna do this. And here's the sets. So then we do done. And this it's gonna all is it will always do this. It's always gonna complain that there's no SHA two five six dot sig. Um, and that it's just they they don't I don't know. I think they don't include it by default for, um, for, like, security reasons, but, yeah, we just do yes, continue, continue without verification, because if we don't, then it's just gonna go in an infinite loop, but now it's installing BSD, which is, which is good, it's installing the, the stuff, so I'm gonna fast forward until it actually is done, so that you guys don't have to wait for this entire thing. All right, we've done got we've sorry we've, <laughs> I don't know how to speak. We've got um, we've finished installing, so now we can just do done, uh, done. Time appears wrong. We don't care about that, and it's saving all the stuff and making the device nodes and all kinds of technical shit that I don't really understand. But here we are, dude, waiting for this to happen. So. Uh, come on, come on. All right, it's doing firmware update. Uh, I was so if you uh, if you don't have internet, whenever you're installing this, whenever you're installing OpenBSD, uh, you'll have to actually manually type f uh, f w underscore update in your uh, command line, so that you can update once like once you get uh, internet access again. Whenever you get internet access, you you'll want to do firmware updates so that you can update all your firmware. Um, because yeah, you need that for in order for most of your hardware to work. But now it's all it's almost done. We're almost done. It's we've and we've completed the longest part of the installation. 
which is installing the sets, but come on, you can do it. Relinking to create kernel, you can do it, you can do it. You can make the kernel, I know you can do it. You can do it. I wonder, you know, I really like how like open BSD and all and all the BSDs are real they're like all they're really customizable you can do you can get any desktop environment that you want on them they're pretty nice um, all right so now all right now we can just reboot and once we reboot we will be able to actually get into the the computer like the computer de the window manager so now we just wait for it to boot there's all this crazy matrix shit as as it's booting. <laughs> you feel like a hacker whenever you're booting into this operating system. All right, here we go. So now we can log into our account, um, and now we're actually in the operating system. So we can do commands and stuff. We can do mail. We can check our uh. Oh shit, wait, I did that wrong. Uh oh, what did I do? <laughs> okay, do mail. And we can check our mail. So as we can see, we've got like, we got some emails. This, oh yeah, one of the really cool things about this operating system is that it actually has a built-in SMP mail server. So you can, uh, you can do emails, you can do local emails that are not like connected to any uh, website or any big corporation at all you can host your own email server so if you're really really paranoid you can do that <laughs> um, this is just a great OS so we're gonna close out of that and now um, now what we're gonna do is um, if you were on if you were in the root you could you could do start X um, if you were like expecting to only just be running the computer as the root user you would do start X and then that would start the uh, the the, um, the window manager, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna do Xeno Dim, um, and that's how you like that's how we, we get into the interface to log into the to the uh, the window manager. So, all right, let's go and do su for super user, and we're gonna do we're gonna do the uh, the the root password, and then we're gonna do Xeno Xeno Dim. Um, and actually, before we do that, let's do package add open box. So open box is just a, a window manager, uh, and I think it actually looks a lot better than the default window manager. So we're just gonna install that real quick. All right, there we go. We got open box installed. So now we can do Xeno Xeno DM, and we can. Um, oh, I typed that wrong. We can do. We can log into the the actual uh, the desktop, the window environment, or the, the the window manager. My bad. So, all right, let me actually refix. Like, let me reorient the screen so that you can see. Now it's back. So now we can actually go in and here and log in to OpenBSD. Um, well, we like, we already logged in, but this is just the this is the logging. In, this is where we log into the window environment or the window manager. My bad. Um, so we put in our password. There we go. So now we have our window and all that stuff. But since we installed OpenBox, we can go here. We can uh, right click or left click on the the desktop. Um, go to um, restart and then click start open box and now we have the open box window manager which is pretty nice it's a really nice it's a really nice window environment um, you can do you can uh, change the desktop uh, you have four desktops and you can like put stuff on them um, but anyway now we're gonna get uh, chromium because unfortunately uh, Firefox isn't supported on Open BSD 32, but Chromium is weirdly enough. But okay, let's. So I'm gonna do SU. 
Uh, oh wait, that's not no, that's not the right password. My bad. Uh, there we go. So now we do package add Chromium, and it's gonna install Chromium. Hopefully, there we go. Alright, that took a while, but here we are. Now we've got Chromium. So we just do exit to leave the, uh, the root account, and then we just type Chrome to, to launch Chromium. Um, and hopefully, it will launch Chromium. Failed to connect. It's saying it. Oh no, that's not good. Oh no. There we go, okay. We've got it open, I think. Um, I mean, at least we've got a box. That's, I mean, that's kind of cool, I guess. There's a, uh, I'm not sure if it's working, actually. Let's see. Hmm. I think what happened was I, like, there was, it, glitched and it was stuck on a stuck on one of the packages and I closed it I closed the installer um, or I clo I killed the uh, the current process of the terminal and oh there we go now we've got it okay well so we do have it all right uh, it was just f taking a long time to load so never mind all right we've got uh, chromium now which is good um, so, now what we're going to do is we're just going to, I guess we're just going to browse a little bit and see if it works correctly. Um, I guess, let's look up, uh, wait, remind me later, I don't care right now. Come on, you damn it, you can, w it's freezing, <laughs> come on. Okay, so now we're just going to search something, I guess, uh, Trump, Trump, I guess we'll search Trump. Or or Perseid meteor shower. I, I didn't I didn't type that, but okay, chromium. I guess I'll search that. Come on, damn it. Okay, so here we go. Uh, meteor shower. Very cool. Very pretty. Anyway, that was a walkthrough of a simple walkthrough of uh, how to get OpenBSD working. Um. Oh yeah, Trump fucking recently survived that goddamn assassination t attempt, which was crazy. But anyway, yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if it was informative, leave a comment or leave a like or whichever you want. You can do nothing if you want. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed and see ya.